Good evening. And I am here to speak to you about the arts, the seedbed where all of this creativity comes from. Ana Luisa Cardona, I worked for the state of Michigan for 13 years as the arts education specialist, retired in January, and I'm recreating myself. And this is an act of recreation tonight. So, I'm ready. What I'm going to do tonight is give you a primer to arts education in the state, and it connects synchronistically with something going on. No right brain left behind. Keep that in your mind. I'll say it again tonight. No right brain left behind. It's a movement that's going on right now. Two more nights, and you can join it online. So, I'm ready? The arts. The arts are what move us, what inspire us. They are what allow us to create something from nothing. They are what make us human. They are our inspiration. They are the seedbeds of what prepare us for what never was. They help us imagine who we want to be. This is the artistic creative process that's part of every kid's education now since 2006 in Michigan. It centers on the artistic creative process. It's iterative. It involves skills. It involves going back again and again. But it's only one credit. And one credit isn't going to prepare Michigan students to be creative for the competitive environment in which you are working, so you know what it's about. But we know also that the arts mean creativity. Without the arts, there is no creativity in K-12 education. And no right brain left behind right now is saying that it is a movement preparing us to deal with the creativity crisis in U.S. education. But we know the arts pay off. It pays off in jobs. It pays off in marketing. It pays off, and yet it's also what we fear because we're competitive with our great competitor, China, but we also know that China's looking at us for creativity. Where's the creativity coming if we're squeezing it out of our schools? What's squeezing it out of our schools is the tyranny of numbers and words. We are still teaching writing, reading, and arithmetic. And we haven't changed, even though what we take in is multimedia, it is the music, it is the sounds, it is the visuals that you've been watching tonight. And where art fits in the curriculum, arts and physical education are the last two stripes on that chart that you're looking at. We, in crisis, chase away the arts. We think that the paltry amount that we dedicate to arts budgets in our schools are somehow going to save us from the crisis we're in instead of investing in the arts, because we know that the payoff is going to be great. NCLB, Reading First, No Child Left Behind, all of that money that has been invested in the arts, rather in not the arts, in reading, writing, science, arithmetic, not that we're against those subjects, but what has been the payoff? Decline in reading, decline in science, decline in math. So why would we keep investing the same amount of money, the same proportions to the same mistakes? Why not turn that around? Now we have to change the way we've been doing things in the arts as well. We have created a very complex system that scares all of you away. So when it comes to arts education, you don't want to get near the schools because it's a scary thing. We have to change that. We have to break down the barriers in the arts. Narrow agendas bear poor fruit. What we have done in our school system is create silos, and it gets worse the higher up in education you get. If you're from a university, you know it, that you can't cross from one silo to the next without getting the benediction of some high up dean or provost. And that breaking into silos is what is keeping us from truly innovating. Instead, we need to start thinking about the natural connections that connect, that exist between science, music, technology, mathematics, geography. They exist, but we wait until people have gotten out of school in those silos to help them discover them. And we also, in the process, kill students' passions for learning. We know that in our schools, creativity declines from the time kids go into kindergarten instead of focusing our education on what makes it passionate for them. It's what brought you here today. There is research behind this. It's not just passion which speaks. Michigan State University has the Creativity Initiative. You can find it on Facebook. University of Michigan is having an international conference this spring on creativity research. What we know is that there are some skills that cut across all disciplines, observing, imaging, abstracting, pattern recognition, play. 
that has no specific discipline. You do that if you're doing science, technology, mathematics. But we divide it up for kids so that they don't ever know how to put it back together again. If you survive the education system, you might be here tonight and you might be creative. And we have to turn that around. So, opportunities to join the creativity movement. MichiganYouthArts.org is a focused on K-12 education. ArtsOfMichigan.org will give you all the information you need about legislation, things going happening. The Michigan Film Incentive is an excellent example of transdisciplinary learning. Kids are passionate about video games. Give them the video games so that they can learn. And no right brain left behind. Check it out because it is happening right now, an international movement of creatives trying to see how they can tap into changing the creativity crisis in our schools. Thank you very much.